Welcome to the Nerds and Friends podcast. My name is Josh Linquist, and today we have the full panel of nerds and a very special guest for a very special story. First, we have Caleb, entrepreneur and uh, businessman expert. We have Nathan Childs, our nerd on the road, coming to you from home today, which is exciting. The astute Carrie Duvall is joining us today. And the mm-hmm. brilliant Will Shaw, the illustrious illustrator, is joining us. Looking fantastic, right, as cool. always, my friend. Absolutely. And today we have my good friend, engineer, and all-around awesome person, Jared Langhals. Very dear old friend. Great to have you on the podcast today, buddy. Hey, I'm happy to be here and, and meet you all for the first time. Yes. And uh, uh, real quick, before we get into some s- important statistics about the story we're talking about, um, I wanted to let everyone know in my slow as smooth, smooth as fast mug, I'm drinking Moroccan organic peppermint green tea. Trying that mm. for the first time. Jared, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking a uh, extra sleepy time um, nice. <laughs> uh, special seasonings tea blend. So Brilliant. if I, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll keep it all light, but if I, if I doze off, just make a loud noise. You know, this story I feel gets so crazy that it might actually help us to That's be a little true. bit suppressed with tea so that yeah. we can make sure that we're not triggered by the, the events that we went through. That's, yeah, that's that's actually probably the um, uh, the reasoning behind it. Absolutely. Don't worry, the rest of us are here to mercilessly make fun of whatever happened. Oh, it's right. it's good. You'll have much to talk about. So today, our story that me and Jared have from what fifteen years ago. It's been quite a while. Um, it's been right. about fifteen years. Uh, our journey takes place on the way to and in the town of Walden. Which, Caleb, take it away. Tell us about Walden, Colorado. Sure. So the town of Walden is the statutory town that is the county seat, most populous community, and the only incorporated municipality in Jackson County, Colorado. It must be pretty huge. (laughs) Yeah, it, it is so big. It has the population, as of 2020, of 513 people. And and since it's incorporated, it's literally got to be the most populous place in Jackson County. Exactly. So exactly. It is also the moose viewing capital of Colorado. So oh. just some interesting facts about Walden. It is situated uh, northern Colorado to the west of Fort Collins, if you are familiar with the lovely state of Colorado. It, so quick clarifying question you said 513 i'm assuming those are humans what's the moose population there more (laughs) more (laughs) and how yeah and how many of the population are moose or moose are are either moose domestic partners or moose um, marriages (laughs) i mean i I have i have my own theories on moose moose human hybrids but we won't get into that today. Uh, you, you, you shut up about the Corf family. We are a proud people that has populated eastern Colorado for many years, of which at 6'2", I am actually the smallest one. So, uh, I, I, I do have an exact like number, genes. actually. Um, oh, so, really? Well, it's a rough, um, it's a rough number. Uh, about From the 20... 20- the, the 2020 moose census? <laughs> moose census. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was so, a very contentious census because it actually factored into the gerrymandering of the moose district. Oh, my God. We can also just continue talking about mooses for the next two hours. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> 2012, the reintroduction program that established a breeding population of 2,300 moose in so northern like Colorado. Four, so it is more. Yeah. So it is more than, than humans. So it's like <laughs> one, one person to every four and a half moose yeah. is... Yeah. Meese, yeah. mice, moose. no, not moose mice. Moose eye. Moose eye. Mooses. Mooses, I believe, is the proper term. We're going to get yelled at on the internet, meese. no matter what we say. <laughs> meese. There's we'll no such thing meese. as bad publicity. Just Mo- Modest, modest meese, got it. <laughs> <laughs> So, Jared, let's kick off yeah. the tale. Let's tell yeah. them uh, what what we were, the whole reason that we journeyed to the far yeah. land of Walden. 
Yeah, so this was um, this was a summer in between one of our years in in uh, in uh, high school, and my uh, my girlfriend at the time, her father was really into running, and uh, you know during the summer looking for things to do, had to do some volunteering for some some program. Oh, I think a J Rotsy that we were in, we had I to think do some it was, yeah. for it. Um, so we were actually looking for some volunteering opportunities, and and this one came up where. Um, my girlfriend's father was running, I don't know, from like Estes Park to uh, Steamboat, Springs. Hill, Steamboat Springs, like a quarter way across the state, um, which is a pretty ridiculous run. Um, and nice, nice. And they needed volunteers to basically man checkpoints along, you know, middle of nowhere uh, places in, in northwestern Colorado. And it even mm. went into Wyoming in some places. Now, was, uh, now, was this a race, or was he doing this, like, solo? It, it was, was a race. A really, really a race. Okay, yeah, so you, oh, guys yeah, got okay. to, you guys got to man the checkpoint to make sure that, that uh, the people that are, like, literally mm-hmm. falling asleep while running don't die. Yeah. So, got to okay. make sure those ultra marathoners are, are being taken care of. I, I think right. I heard that, that race mentioned in a book I like. Yeah. I oh. couldn't tell you the name of it, though. Well, I can tell you the name <laughs> of the book, but it's not really relevant. Story. Yeah. Anyway, keep going, please. Yeah. So uh, just like in, uh, you know, so we're and I mean, did I really have a choice? I mean, she's my girlfriend's father. Like, did I have a choice to say no to go to going in, you know, some random place in Colorado to? He don't. He's holding it against you forever. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, luckily, though, you know, I wasn't you know alone on this. I had my buddy Josh that was willing to go with me. Um, take up this this adventure and uh if i recall i was invited we had to leave at like 11 in the morning and i was invited around midnight the night before (laughs) and i was like you know what sure why not (laughs) why the fuck not (laughs) i totally understand my my dad's a a big runner and i've been voluntold i'm helping at races many a time uh gotcha gotcha so the the we knew this was going to be a long uh, a long car ride to get up there because it's way northwestern part of Colorado and there's not a there's not a direct interstate you're just taking like highway back roads through the mountains actually a really pretty drive to get there um, but we wanted to make sure we had good music along the way and this is before you know way before streaming and and internet music it was CDs at least we had CDs you right know. And we had to print out MapQuest of where we were going. Oh so that God. we knew <laughs> how to get to this place we'd never been before. Yeah. To some people listening to this, we have just confused them very much. <laughs> <laughs> had to print the internet to yeah. see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. All right, all right, kids, kids. There was this. Uh, there was this amazing time uh, in the past where uh, after atlases, but before you could get on your phone and look up anything, you had to do the intermediary, which was look something up online, print it off, and get lost that way. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh you know the race provided you know good instructions on where the destination was so you know for the volunteers that were going to be manning this this checkpoint outside of walden here's where you need to go like we've got we've got the camp set up for you guys um and they gave us an address to a school and i was like great it's going to be at it's going to be at the school um so that's where we print out map quest directions to and uh, we we have our uh, you know summer jams of what 20, 2007 is that how you say that of 07? of 07? I think yeah if 07, I recall probably. it was 07. yeah uh, or it might have been 08, but um yeah. it was called summer jams I'm surprised that you remember that and I'm surprised I remember it we did yeah probably we had literally... stuff like you know, get that probably had lollipop there. on it you know Lil Wayne all that kind of had stuff. a lot of Lil Wayne I remember that yes. Um, and the thing was, we took the time to make this mix CD, which took effort back then. Mm. And then we left and we got out of Colorado Springs and we did not have that CD in Jared's Jetta, which was a problem. (laughs) Um, because then we had to listen to the radio like barbarians for this like seven hour drive. And I remember I was sitting there thinking, what have I signed up for? We forgot our freaking music. This is, I mean, to a high schooler, that's like a travesty, you know? 
Right. And especially when, you know, we're, we, when we actually get into the mountains, uh, reception goes to crap and, you know, you get, right. you get the radio stations for 20 seconds, it goes in and out and then you switch it. And then uh, basically you're just listening to static. Mm-hmm. And, um, so we were just frustrated for, you know, most of those seven hours of the drive up, um, uh, but, you know, we're still looking forward to like a good camping, camping outage outing. Uh, you know, we had our tent, we had like hot dogs, we had some, some firewood and stuff to, to, you know, we were going to camp out before we had to be at our checkpoint at like three or 4 a.m. in the morning. It was something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, I think the next part of the story, and I want to hear you tell it because you tell it really well, is the bird in the road. Oh. Uh, yeah, so I love Will and Carrie's expressions of the <laughs> All right, let's yeah, let's let's uh, let's wrangle this shit. Okay, so um, at this point, so I, I was driving the whole time here, and uh, like I said, it's kind of back roads, highways, lots of turns, lots of winding, and then there's all of a sudden like we came out of the the forest, and it's just like straight straight road, two lane, two lane, not even highway, but just two lane road. Um, and uh, we're starting to get like a little bit, a little bit, you know, worried of like, are we, do we even know where we're going at this point? Like, are these directions right? Like, where the heck are we? Where, where, where is this taking us? Like, I thought we were in the mountains. Um, and, uh, you know, at some point, we would see, we'd see things far out in the distance, right? So every now and then there'd be, you know, carry on or, or dead, dead animals, roadkill vultures, things like that, that would be, you know, picking away at the carcass. Um, and for some reason, there's this one bird that, that sticks out in particular. And we kind of drive by it. And that just how I think this bird was standing in its roadkill, it, we didn't acknowledge it initially, but I think as soon as we passed it, we both like looked at each other and we're like, that bird was wearing shoes. Like that bird had shoes. It was literally standing in shoes, and so we were like, uh, "It looked yeah. like a bird with shoes," and we were just like, "We just, it just, we just looked at each other and we're like, did you just see that, or am I hallucinating?'" And instant recognition in his eyes, I was like, "Nope, Jared saw that too. It's a bird yeah. with shoes on." Yeah. So actually, to this day, still don't know if it was actually r- real roadkill or what the heck we were seeing. But it was uh, definitely acid. I'm like in, in my <laughs> in my experience with psychedelics, that's definitely you. you that was the brown acid, um, which you shouldn't take, kids. If you get the brown acid, uh, leave it. That's left over from Woodstock, and uh, nobody had a good time with that except for Jerry Garcia. And look where he is now. <laughs> this is a very important question. What kind of shoes are we talking? Are the, was the bird like wearing some forces? Or I saw bowling shoes. Yeah, bowl, like clown shoes, like really, like really long, so, long of doctor shoes. So you saw the vultures from the movie Dumbo, like, like with the cigar hanging out of his mouth, and la- and like, listen here, kid, like, <laughs> like just, let the know. record show we did not yeah. observe a cigar. Mm. <laughs> Very True. important. True. It's also, I guess, but going off of that that comment though, like that bird did not move. Like that bird, like owned the road, and um, it did not fly away from you know a car speeding past in the other lane. It was just like, you know, what? I'm here. I wearing shoes. Wearing shoes. It is what like, it is. Do what I fucking, want. Fucking fight me. That's that's <laughs> what that bird was saying. Yeah, fucking right. fight me. Right. And then, and I, you'll have to remind me, Jared, I forget how we discovered it. We realized that the entire time we had been fighting with the radio, like 20 minutes before we get into town, we realized that we did indeed have the CD that we wanted to bring. It was just, it had been in the radio the whole time and we never thought, we just thought we forgot the CD. We never actually tried whatever it's CD so was stupid. in there. Yeah, it's it was, so and I was just, yeah. But I remember like, we were so happy that we were like, we have our music for the very final little bit of our trip. Yeah. Yeah. So like things are really looking up, you know, we're hallucinating and now we have music. Yes. Um, Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Combination. And then we come across the, the Oasis of Walden and. Uh, Oasis is an interesting word choice, but continue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some amount of civilization, I guess. Uh, you know, it, 
I'll kind of allow like it, it barely. <laughs> kind of like an old western town is what I remember. Um, you know, one one city block basically of uh, uh, you know random businesses on either side, and you know there's not even a stop sign in in the city itself. Um, so we're we're following our directions, and we navigate to the elementary school. Um, Real quick, I must interject. You made oh, a comment yep. that I still find funny to this day. Because we start driving in and we see some of the houses on the periphery of this small town. And they are dingy at best. And then we pass the town cemetery on the way in. And Jared immediately says, look at that. Best place to be in Walden. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> So, we're, you know, we're kind of expecting to see other volunteers at this point, um, you know, maybe some congregation of people that are showing up for the shift. Um, we pull into the parking lot of where the directions that we printed out told us to go um, to this elementary school. And uh, turns out it's like kind of a derelict elementary school, like clearly like on its way out, um, not used anymore. I I don't even know. I, I remember it was like it had been closed for a while. Like there was like dust and like spider webs on the windows. Like you couldn't really see in. And like parts of it looked like they had collapsed. Like it was like derelict. Yeah. I don't know. It might have just been a Colorado public school. <laughs> Entirely possible. <laughs> <laughs> it was summer. Yeah. 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 And, uh, you know, maybe this is this is kind of where maybe the juvenile uh, um you know, the non-developed prefrontal cortex of teenagers kind of come into play of, between Josh and I. And, you know, we realized, well, this is where the directions say. So we're going to set up tent. We're going to set up our camp in the parking lot here. And we're just going to, we're just going to. Even though there's no one around, I guess we're nope. just like, okay. Yep. So open parking lot. We get our tent set up. Uh, everything's doing great. Like having a great time. Like looking forward to, uh, you know, camping and doing our volunteer thing the next, the next morning, um, you know, and then it's get time for dinner. And so, well, we brought firewood, so we needed to cook up, uh, we need to cook up our hot dogs. And so we proceeded to start a fire, uh, <laughs> start a fire in the in, elementary school parking lot. In a parking lot. Okay. Okay. Yes. Of, of the right. school. Uh, yep. So sounds fair. Sounds fair. <laughs> The I mean, statute of limitation on fire arson in the school is... parking lot before, right? Sure. <laughs> I was going to say the statute of limitation on arson in the state of Colorado. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's it's probably a decade. You're safe. Yeah. <laughs> then it comes down to that. Let's just burn down the school. <laughs> we're going to start. We're going to start a signal to the sheriff to run us out of town right now. It's funny uh, that you say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay it's very funny you say that yeah i gotta know where this goes yeah oh, yeah you have no idea where it goes it's a beautiful story jared will you do the honors of continuing my friend uh, very well so um at this point a ooh, you have to remind me josh was it the uh was it the um the citizen of walden or was it the law enforcement personnel that showed up first if, I, if memory serves me, a citizen walked up first. With, with a child. With, with a, a child. child. Yep. And, and he just stared at us awkwardly for a bit. And we were like, hello. And then finally, after like minutes had passed, he approaches and he goes, why are you starting a fire? And we like, we have like, I mean, we have hot dogs on a stick. Like we're clearly... <laughs> and a tent, like a full tent to fit two semi-grown men. Like, mm -hmm. we're clearly camping. It's just <laughs> in a parking lot of a in, derelict in, elementary school. In the parking lot of an old elementary school. You know, not like a serial killer or a pair of serial <laughs> killers. The, there's nothing here that's like, that's like, oh yeah, we're Henry Lee Lucas and Otis Tool. No, yeah. just a couple of high schoolers camping in the parking lot of a derelict elementary school. In, in a town where everybody would know everybody and mm -hmm. like nobody passes you through this town if they're not from the town, right? And so clearly- Oh, obviously, oh uh, clearly not, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I just remember this this father, you know, I, actually, I felt pretty bad actually because, you know, he kind of, he was pulling like, you know, this is our, this is our town that, you know, 
we we love Walden and like you're 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 really you're like desecrating it here like well, you need you need to stop this and like yeah. like okay yeah. we he got to- very like self righteous and had like a tear going down his face like it was like we were like whoa dude like we're just following map quest here buddy like we're <laughs> also <laughs> children <laughs> cool, it. cool it man this is just like following- this is trending toward the weirdest version of Rambo like does Brian like. <laughs> I made the sheriff joke. Does Brian fucking Dennehy show up and like try and run you out of town? Well, <laughs> like, come on, well, it's getting warmer. This is, this is amazing. And yeah. so, I, yeah, does so, he still have the child as he's approaching you? Oh yeah, because that, yep. that that seems safe. Approach well, the child, a few I, strangers with fire yeah. with the child. Yeah, Jeffrey, I'm going to show you how we handle strangers here in Walden, <laughs> fucking Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, we proceed to tell him, like, okay, maybe this is not right. Uh, we're just, we, we're just going to cook our dinner, you know, put out the fire, and we're volunteering. You know, we're trying to pull the sympathy card. Like, we're volunteering here. We were just told to go here and camp. Like, I don't know. Um, so he goes away, and then, and then the sheriff shows up. Yep. Um, okay. <laughs> Minutes later. So, yeah, it, it, we were kind of we were kind of tucked, not like in the tent, but like around the side of the tent, and uh, we kind of hear, you know, the footsteps come up and kind of stop in the tent. And it's one of those scenes where you see like the shadow in the tent. Um, <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. you, know, you know, law enforcement hat. It's like, oh, great. <laughs> oh, goody. <laughs> yep. mm-hmm. So we uh, look around and <laughs> he's like. <clears throat> Uh, what are you doing once again? <laughs> so <We're> goddamn yeah. <laughs> camping. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so he's like, um, you know, I was like, We're gonna, you can't, you can't do this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Didn't uh, specify like, anything. Just you can't do yeah. this. Yeah. Just, and I, I, remember I, I said, I'm a. Go ahead. Go ahead. He said a couple times. He was like, "This isn't the big city." This isn't Buena Vista or something, and we were like, "Okay, buddy, cool your jets." Like, <laughs> I, this law enforcement official uh, of this town, <laughs> say you can't do this. I like, I, I like the earnestness of this police officer that he's actually not even going to make up a law. He's not right. even going to say like, "You can't, you can't solicit here. You can't loiter. You can't be a vagrant." He's just, he's just going to say, "You can't do this." Because we are not this town that is slightly bigger than this town <laughs> that is that is so far away that I could barely fathom it, apparently. Right. right. I mean, it's but probably that and also, like, looking at this whole situation, it is like, there's so much about it that was wrong in the first place. It's like, mm-hmm. what, where, do, where do you even, it's almost like, where do you even start? And, like, they're kids to begin with. Like, do you have, do you have parents? <laughs> like, yeah. Why did you come here? Like, what are you doing? Why do you have a fire? In the, why are you camping in a parking lot? Who are you? What, like, there's so many questions. So, See, slasher like, movies make sense with shit like this. This is why slasher <laughs> movies make sense. Like, they're teenagers, they're out in the middle of the woods, there's nothing, and here's this cop who has no fucking idea what's going on, like, yeah. like you were literally 30, you were literally like 30 seconds after this guy leaving from a dude with an edger and <laughs> severe facial and chest scars running out of the mountains to massacre you, and you right. would be the intro to a horror film. The all story's because- not over. Oh my God, <laughs> we're not. We're like maybe halfway through the story. I'm just, I'm just writing this movie as know, this is right. going on. Yeah, and... yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I was, you know, we're clearly like deflated at this point. You know, we know we have to knock it off. We have to, we have to figure out something. Maybe we're sleeping in the car or whatever. Um, <clears throat> so, at the end of our, towards the end of it. I think he actually realizes like that we are volunteers for this race and he's like, Oh, they're camping in the park, like two blocks down. Yeah. Like, Oh, okay. Um, well then, uh, you know, we'll put out the fire and, you know, as we were putting it out, um, I, I just, I remember this, like, this was so stupid, but I was like, I asked the sheriff, like, do you want a hot dog? <laughs> 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 
uh, he's like, no. <laughs> no. No. But I, no. I remember that no. he was like, you're not allowed to make fires out here. And we were like, well, how are we going to cook our hot dogs? Yeah. He was like, that's your problem. And we were like, great. Well, this is awesome. Yep. Um, I mean, now we have cold hot dogs and, uh, um, you know, so this is the next chapter and, of and the a story. ton of Mountain Dew. We had cold hot dogs and a ton of Mountain Dew. Oh, yeah. Like, he was like, what are you guys drinking? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, going like, through, like, you guys must be like, clearly, like, you got whiskey. You, you know, you guys are just like sloshed. You're like, we've got no liquor. Like, it <laughs> nope. is just Mountain Dew. We are two he, sober J Rot yeah. <laughs> on summer vacation volunteering <laughs> for a relay race. This we is, are, this we is are what as we do. sober and innocent as two children yeah. can be. <laughs> yeah. Any good adventure is stock full of tons of cold Mountain Dew. Of course. Right. Of right. course. Um, yep. So we face another conundrum is we had taken a lot of time to put up the tent. And apparently we were ordered to move to this park on the other side of town. So two blocks mm-hmm. away. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll, Jared, I'll let you tell them what our solution to that problem was. Right. No, well, I, I, I'm, I'd, I'd like to pause real quick because I'm yeah. looking at a map of the town, and from from what I can tell, the 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 park is right next to and or connected to the cemetery. So there was just, a cemetery near there, yeah. but just yeah. going to just going to just going to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Colorado yep. and parks and freaking cemeteries. Mm-hmm. Right. People I mean, are there just clearly dying to get was in not there. enough land, so they had to consolidate space. I guess I don't. Even though I mean, there, you, you, so got, you got it. Too many people immigrated from Buena Vista. <laughs> 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 Apparently. Yeah. So me and Jared proceed. <clears throat> To mm-hmm. Jared scouts ahead and drives the car over to the new the park that we're supposed to go to while I stay with our tent and our stuff. And then he comes back and we proceed to walk carrying our tent to the park. Now to yeah. get there, we had to go down a couple of residential streets. So there's two of us just carrying a tent. Like a large tent above our heads. And there are people... The town. Looking through their windows, just watching us <laughs> as we walk with our tent. <laughs> like Are they a stealing a tent? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like in all fairness, like it was like it was a hand, it was a hand me down tent from my parents. So it's probably like you know, 20, 20 years old from fifteen years ago. It was pretty complicated to put up. Like there were a lot of things. So we we were saving a lot of effort taking it down to put and putting it back up again. So our solution was hold it over our heads. I mean, it was a it's a big tent, but yes. you know it was it wasn't very heavy. So just over our heads, like we're you know doing like a snatch over our heads, carrying <laughs> through downtown. Valid, valid solution. I think that was a really great idea. You avoided the extra work to take it down and put it back up. Mm-hmm. And in addition, you got to be two cryptids in the middle of water, Baldwin, Colorado. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, like, I mean, like, like, legitimately, like somebody looking out the window is like. And then there was the nine foot tall, four legged horse beast. And when I looked upon it, I could not see a head, but <laughs> a, a strange domed body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and honestly, you you gave those people like generations of stories to tell. <laughs> yeah. Think of the podcast they're not doing about us. They're telling it around a fireside right now. Mm-hmm. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. And so, I remember when we got to the park, we had a number of issues with camping in this place as opposed to elementary school. First mm-hmm. off, there was no one else there. We were just in a small park. Um, yeah. There were no bathrooms or facilities. Um, and we were not allowed to start a fire in the park. If anything, a parking lot seemed a lot better place for us to cook our meal. But, um, Jared, do you remember how we got in touch with our savior, that man who worked at the the oh. near, so uh, adjacent to this park, besides the cemetery, was a new elementary school. There were yeah. two elementary schools. Yeah, yeah. In yes. so, <laughs> so the re- the reason I for the elementary confusion. school is that it wasn't good enough for something for this uh, for this town. So they needed a new elementary school. So now they have two elementary schools and one that's just not used. Um, <laughs> uh, for all 10 kids or whatever however many 
uh, children they have. Um, maybe they have a lot because it's just kind of that, you know, they need to continue the population growth. So I, I don't know. Um, Too many moose anyway, related deaths, but let's, let's not get into that. Right, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, don't you know, fuck we, with them. You know, yeah. we're, we're looking for a solution now to our cold hot dogs. Um, you know, are we going to have to eat these things like out of the package? Like, that's disgusting. Come on. Um, and uh, um, luckily, we saw someone look like a nice gentleman um, come out of the elementary school, kind of look like a, uh, looked like a janitor um, of some kind. And so really, you know, like, like little kittens, we like went over to him with like big, <laughs> big sad eyes being like you know excuse me sir like um we were told to camp here but we can't have a fire and we need to cook food and do you know of any anywhere where we can um anywhere we where we could have a fire pit or something and he told us follow me so <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so both of us um proceed to follow him you know he unlocks the, the school and we go, we walk inside and, you know, it's dark and, you know, turning on lights as we go. Well, I, I remember he didn't even turn on the lights in most places. He just was yeah. like, we're just in a dark elementary school. And we were like, this is fine. This is not sketchy at all. <laughs> yep. And we're carrying our, we're carrying our pack of hot dogs. <laughs> uh, and uh, he leads us to the kitchen, you know, the cafeteria, which is okay. Nice. Um, you know, we're onto something here and, we proceeded to uh, cook our hot dogs in this cafeteria of an elementary school. Like in a dirty water fryer. Uh, yeah. For some reason, they didn't have mm-hmm. microwaves that we could have just microwaved the hot dog. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, new, new, new school. There's, there's, good, there's bound to be some bugs. <laughs> <laughs> so we, uh, we cook our hot dogs. They were, they were good. We were hungry at that yeah. point, so it was good. Yep. Yep. Um, our, our our mysterious savior let us out of the school. We didn't see him again. Um, and we were, this, this is, it's like around sundown. So probably 7.38 ish in the evening. And we're like, well, we got to get up at like three in the morning and drive 45 minutes to our checkpoint outside of town. So we're like, let's, let's get to sleep as soon as we can, you know? Um, yeah. And there, there are, by the way, as this whole thing is going down, there are people walking past us, looking at us like we're just aliens. Like mm-hmm. we are just like, yeah, just giving us the weirdest looks. Yeah. Um, so at you- this point still like, I mean, at this point I'm like, man, this is not a campsite because nobody, nobody else is that like, we're still the only ones. Like I'm expecting a lot of people here in, um, you know, and we would, we would be like hanging out with everybody, but not at all. We're still just the the lone um, outsiders camping now in a public park. Yes, it was very awkward. I have someone to, I have someone to blame for this to later, day. but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna save that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember we went to sleep and we were trying to sleep, and we were actually pretty comfy in the tent. And then this is how I remember it: is that after it had gotten dark, sometime later. I woke up in the middle of the night and I was like, I need to pee. So I opened up the tent and I step outside and there are people sleeping around us in a circular formation without tents, without sleeping bags, just with pillows and blankets, like forming a circle around us. So I, awkwardly tiptoe past them i find a bush i take a piss and i come back and i'm like jared we're surrounded (laughs) it's so bizarre it was so weird yeah Uh, and like frightening like when you when you go to sleep and you wake up and the situation is completely different and you're also disoriented because you just woke up and you're in a new place it is it's actually it's actually pretty frightening Yes, um, these were not people from the race. These were people from the town, um, and they were either watching us or protecting us from something. It's a uh, the jury's cult- out on that <laughs> cultist ritual. Uh, yeah, it was real <laughs> weird. They, um, they 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 were people from the town. Yes, they were not what? people from the race. They just wanted what? to summon their lord and savior. That's all. Right. Right. <laughs> Luckily, by the time the cemetery, 
<laughs> I'm surprised you guys didn't get Wicker Man. Like the like Us too. Got, considering considering the way this went down, I'm very surprised you you guys didn't get Wicker Man. Oh, we're not done with the story yet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so and they've been dead for years. Damn, <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm just waiting for the twist where they wake up, the entire town is abandoned. And... <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. L- luckily, so w- when we did have to wake up um, and you know get ready to drive to our shift, at that point, like there were actual like tents that were um, up. So like at that point, like okay, folks were coming in, and I. Th- over the overnight, I guess these are people that probably go like checkpoint to checkpoint. So they're like maybe just an hour, a couple hours ahead of the runners, right. um, rather than people that normally drive seven hours to go to a random checkpoint um, and camp overnight. These are people that are just like an hour or two ahead of the runners. I, I can um, add some context there as, uh, as a son of a person who is an ultra runner. Those are most likely uh, the runner's crew that then follow the runner and bring them aid, supplies, et cetera. Wait. And yeah. H- hang on. So uh, literally a third of this podcast right now is the uh, our children of ultra runners because between you and Will, um, who is, whose father is ultra and also an ultra runner, that is a, that is a shockingly high quotient of dads who don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> so they run really far and yeah. really slowly. Like my, my dad ran five miles a day. And when I said, Hey dad, maybe you could like, like I read this book called uh, born to run and you know, mm-hmm. maybe you'd like to get into ultras. He'd be, he said, son, I'm not in it to get any faster. I know I am only going to get slower over time. So <laughs> It's, that is really funny. Okay. Yep. And he was a moose, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So, so yeah, once we departed Walden, we were quite shaken up, and we were like, "Is this really happening?" Like, and then we, I remember, we drove forty-five minutes, and we had to wait at our checkpoint, and for a long time, no one came past the time we were supposed to be there. So we were like, are we really in the right place? Like, this, I, I this remember, entire, th- yeah, th- this entire journey, like every minute of the journey, I was like questioning my own existence, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> like, there's nothing that has been solid proof of anything being right the entire <laughs> Like a shared fever dream. Yeah. <laughs> But I remember there was like when we were waiting in the car trying to stay warm, there were like mosquitoes crawling through the vents to get in the car. And I was like, what is this place? Like, why do people live out here? Yeah. Crazy. And then to be solid, to, to have solitude, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I just, I, I just, I remember because the rest of the story is pretty benign. I mean, we, we yeah. did the checkpoint, people came, and then we met. Jared's at the time girlfriend's dad in Steamboat Spring. We had a Subway sandwich. I remember that. Yeah. And then we drove home the next day and we were very tired. But we, before we went to bed, we gathered up our friends and we were like, we had a weird trip, guys. Like, let me tell you. And we told all of them and they were quite shook. And um, I think what really struck with me was just the attitude of the people in Walden. Just not so much that we were these strange outsiders, but they would be like, just that they had this air of like, don't you know what this is? This is Walden. And we were like, no, we don't, we don't know what that is at all. Like we're just, <laughs> we didn't know your town existed until 24 hours ago. Like, so it was a, right. it was a strange time. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was, you know, that's the story of Walden. Um, a few years later in college, I remember seeing a, you know, Walt, now Walden has become a theme, well, will continue to be a theme throughout the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> of course. And, and and so in college, I remember reading the newspaper and it was about, uh, it was about Walden. So naturally I had to read it. And um, <laughs> it was, it was about how Walden turned down a, uh, a massive oil investment because I guess they're sitting on a gold mine. Walden is sitting on a gold mine of oil. Um, and you know, it it would have it would have turned their 
those people that live there would have become, you know, millionaires overnight with how, you know, their, their property that they were living on. Um, and they all turned it down, you know, uh, the, 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 the city voted against allowing any like, uh, uh, miners to come into town and voted against any mining rights. Um, so it was, it was very, uh, fascinating, um, to hear, you know, once again, Walden having their very, uh, keen values for their city. Doing their own thing, I guess. You know what this whole story makes me think of? Hmm. The song 96 Quite Better Be by CKY. I'm not familiar hmm. with this one, Nathan. What's it about? Uh, well, basically, it follows a traveler that goes into a small town of 96 residents. <laughs> and these 96 residents don't like outsiders coming in. Uh, uh, if you guys want to look it up, look it up. If not, it's okay. Uh, well, I mean, it's I'm going to look a, it up after the podcast now, obviously. Yeah. But. And then he busts into the bar and says, my name's Sue. How are you? There you go. <laughs> I was going to, yeah, when you said, what does this remind me of? I was going to uh, say the hills have eyes. Yeah, the hills <laughs> have eyes. The hills have eyes, too. The remake of the hills have eyes. Uh, yeah. Hatchet is a big one. If you haven't watched Hatchet, and or rather, if you have seen Hatchet and you don't know that it's a parody, please rewatch it because it's fucking amazing. Yeah, and you guys, you guys had the setup, but not the payoff for every slasher movie ever. You even had if a, we had, the had a payoff, we wouldn't be here today. Yep. You even had a bird. I, I know, and how and and like how much more money would you guys have being sold as a story? Right. <laughs> yes, yeah. if we had perished horribly. I was and gonna now, say I was I was waiting. You for the should have brought more show. horny teens with you. You guys would have been the survivors. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> That's the thing. With like so this so a message to all the high school kids who may or may not find this podcast: bring all your friends, mm-hmm. spread out the amount of murder that could happen because you just might survive <laughs> and get a movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah, spread yeah. out the murder. Now, now the the, the cherry on top actually happened. Um, Ironically, this week for me, um, when when I set this up with Josh to, to, to actually recount our story, um, let me see if I can do this. I'm going to try to share my share my screen to just show you and give you some proof here that this is like this actually happened. Yeah, uh, I'm making sure in the settings screen sharing is allowed, so it should be good to go. Okay, let me try this. Well, I'm exi- I'm, I'm excited for this. Say, Carrie, I'm curious. Though, uh, we don't. We only you, have Josh. their word to take for it that they didn't have anybody else with them. So, mm-hmm. this is true. Who? Hot dogs. Hot dogs. <laughs> <Could've> just, <laughs> hey, try it now, uh, Jared. Try it now. I just switched had, the settings. We had this piece of wrapped meat, and we told the man it was hot dogs, and nobody knew that it was Bill's arm. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, here we go. Ooh. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we sure can. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So let me try to pull this up. <laughs> can you all see my voicemails here? Yep. Uh, Check this out. Check this out. <laughs> yeah, wow. On 524. When did I say that I'd come up on here? Oh, I guess it's just oh, before this. But You're right. It was slightly before that. We mentioned yeah. Walden. Let's hear it. Or wish not to be reminded again. Did you hear that? Creepy. So you got a robocall from Walden. Or wish a not robocall to be from Walden that you do not wish to be reminded again. <laughs> do you wish to be reminded of Walden again? What? Oh, they uh, know. Wow. They know. <laughs> yeah. So how about uh, the- Wow. They've That's never crazy. stopped watching us from their windows, Jared. They've never stopped watching. <laughs> The men yeah. who came to Walden. No. That, that's you a good mark right there. Oh yeah, it's, especially considering your guys's odyssey um, through that town. Like, like there, there's, there's no way that you guys aren't some sort of like weird story right. of of the of the original two vagrants. <laughs> and they that, set fire outside your grandparents' elementary school. <laughs> yeah. they, they, they probably like memorialized like the, whatever like uh, it's just a bad statue whatever ashes are, are from that original fire that we started in the parking lot 
just a weird statue of me and you with our sad hot dogs and like the sheriff looking all <laughs> triumphant over us. <laughs> the Mountain Dew was replaced with Jack Daniels for effect. Of course. Just yeah, to, just well, to vi- yeah, villainize us known. further. So when I woke up in the middle of a circle in a park in Walden, Colorado, you're marked for life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, man. That is a good story. Thank you for coming yeah. on and telling us that, Jared. This was awesome. Yeah, definitely, Josh. Good to, good to recount it again. Oh, it's always a good always a good odyssey to tell people. Love the uh, love the commentary. Y'all are awesome. Yeah. 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 Thanks I'm, for telling I'm, us the story, dude. Yeah, I'm, I'm still concerned. Whatever happened to the bird with shoes? <laughs> its fate remains unknown to mankind. Yeah. It was literally the don't go over there thing. Like, <laughs> out of all the tropes, uh, it's just literally just a bird going, no, don't go down that road. People don't come back <laughs> down that road. <laughs> yeah. That's where the Moose King lives. You don't want to go there. <laughs> well, that was awesome, guys. Thank you for another wonderful episode of Nerds and Friends, everyone. We'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. See ya. See ya. <laughs>